Hey everyone, welcome to Hell with Satan and Harry. I'm your co-host Satan, this is your co-host Harry. Hi. <laughs> well, I'm Satan and this is Harry, because I'm not an idiot. But I like to talk about things. <sighs> How's everyone doing this week? Welcome to Hitting Mark with Harry and Mark on KQED. The soft voice. I don't know why I'm doing too many bits. Hi, folks. Welcome to Herring the Mark with Hitting and the Harry. I'm your, that was completely on accident. Oh, man. I'm your co host, Mark. This is your co host, Harry. Hello. Say hi, Harry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Stop it. Just stop just, look, leaving air I in the conversation. Want, I want to let the listeners know that I am never informed about how Mark's going to open up. So it's just. I don't do anything. <laughs> I just I say it and I stutter. It's like fucking walking down the stairs and missing a step. But it's pure gold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To. Demetrius. <laughs> anyway, we're two idiots who like to talk about things we have no idea what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Harry? Yes? A week is comprised of seven days. Yeah. And I don't know the hours calculation, but what did you do on those seven days? Um, I, other than working, um... Did I, man? Okay, I played some games, and good man, probably pooped occasionally. I should hope so. I wouldn't want you to have that. (laughs) What's that YouTube commercial where it's like YouTube commercial? (laughs) Everyone has toxic poop stored in their colon or something like that in their body. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want like that to be all of you. Yeah. Just like a a bear with like <laughs> shit in his matted fur. Yeah, you know, I just a normal week. Just nothing really exciting. I do, I am gonna talk about something that happened, um, but I'll bring it later on in the podcast. But other than that, all right, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. All right, all right. How about yourself, all sir? Right. How was your humble week? beginnings? <laughs> Uh, it's all right. I, uh, I, uh, we want to hear, want to hear the, what, how's your, um, model going? Oh God. It's, it's looking me in the eyes right now. I've taken, uh, one of my old Tau models. Yes, I play Tau. They are not only the cooler design species, but I think they're also really fun to play with. Debate me fuckers anywho um i took one of the the little vehicles and i'm practicing painting on that because i'm too much of a pussy to just jump right into it um oh so i celebrated mother's day because i have a mother who isn't dead she's very much alive unlike batman um did that and then last night, I showed my wonderful girlfriend, Tenet. Oh. Or should I say, I watched Tenet while she explained the parts that I couldn't understand after the second watch through. Okay. Very impressive movie. Um, say what you will about Christopher Nolan, but like, I really do appreciate that with the exception of the Dark Knight trilogy, he just keeps churning out, like, non-franchise film after non-franchise film with these high-concept, high-practical-effects, like, just extravaganzas. So, yeah, it was really fun seeing this movie, Robert Pattinson, as charming as ever. Hold on, I have to point out, Mm-hmm. The actor playing the protagonist, um, Denzel Washington's son, mm-hmm. he is so goddamn charming. Mm-hmm. He's really good in this. Like he's got like a, a devil may care James Bond attitude, but without the misogyny. Well, mm-hmm. as much misogyny. And if it wasn't for Robert Pattinson, he would like pretty much be carrying this movie almost single handedly. If it wasn't. God, I should really come in more prepared for these movies reviews. Um, the actress 
So the the main three actors, uh, I'm just gonna say Robert <laughs> Robert Battinson, um, what's his name's son, and the actress from uh, Great Gatsby. Um, her defining characteristic is that she's tall. No, um, God, I really wish I had the names of these people on hand. But all three of these actors actually do a really good job at creating like. Uh, a good sense of like chemistry. Uh, Robert Pattinson and the uh, the female lead actually don't spend all that much screen time together, but uh, the protagonist and her do, and they have really really good chemistry between the two of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kenneth Branagh is good in it, but like I've seen him do the angry evil Russian person once before, and like he could have done like German or Spaniard or. Yeah. Or I don't know, even English, since you know he is. But whatever. Um, but yeah, he's good in it. Um yeah. it's an immensely complicated film if you're just watching it casually. Yeah. Uh I typically hate thinking when I go to see the movie. No, no, no. Um It's a, it's definitely one of those movies where you you're gonna have to watch it at least once or twice just to get like some of the mechanics of the movie down. Okay. Uh, there's some really great bits where it's like they film a lot of this stuff in like reverse, but it's not just like, oh, oh you shot it in reverse. It's like the actor is actually acting in normal speed, normal frame, and the environment around them is like in reverse, and it's actually really impressive. Um, yeah, I I was actually really surprised. The runtime is about two hours forty minutes. It actually went by at a very brisk pace. Um, yeah, if anyone hasn't seen it, uh, I know Christopher Nolan's kind of like the, oh, God, what's the next mind fuck he's putting out? But, like, they're actually really good. They're typically, like, an amalgamation of, like, spy adventure movies with, like, a twist. Yeah. But they're they're always enjoyable. Um, yeah. What else was I going to fucking say? I don't remember, but we'll get to it. We'll get okay. to it soon enough. I'll do it. Harry, yeah, you lead the charge. Okay. Um, we're probably not breaking news. It's probably a week old already. News, but uh, Discord is partnering up with Sony. Uh, to integrate Ooh. Discord into the PlayStation, which oh is amazing. Um, is this going to be um? sole partnership like they're only going to be with uh online communications with sony and online or uh i think it's just so they can have discord onto the playstation um because a while ago uh microsoft remember there's the rumors of microsoft buying out discord like in i didn't know that outright yeah they're just gonna buy them out like oh like we own you now like we own discord but that fell through um they i guess it just didn't happen and now that i hear about this i th- i'm pretty sure what happened was there's definitely not enough money onto the table for discord to be like yo we're done here you go microsoft um mm-hmm. or they're just like mm, no we we would rather just you know <laughs> keep keep making money off discord you know so um <clears throat> it oh mark just Dropped out of the call, but I'll keep going. Um, so what have um, I think Sony being the smarter of the two, just kind of uh, was like, "Yo, Discord, I don't want to own you. I, what I want is to just, you know, have you on my system. Um, which is a lot smarter because one." It's a for sure thing that, you know, Discord's um, um, going to keep... Uh, Harry? Yeah, you're back. Okay. Sorry, I, I was, I was fuck, still talking. <laughs> still talking. Um, so Did Satan do that? Probably, that fucker. Um, so, Sony... Okay, so you were talking about Sony. Uh, Sony partnering up with Discord. So, I think... What's, what happened was basically 
Sony went up to Discord after the whole Microsoft bit and said, yo, Discord, check it out. I don't want to own you. Mm. But yeah, they, they waggled their cash. Mm -hmm. Like, check it out. You partner up with me. Let us use your, you know, brand and system in our console. You know, it's a win-win. Let people me want... be your muse. Yeah, you know, like, people are going to want to buy PlayStation consoles because Discord's on there. Mm -hmm. Where and, and the thing is, like, in Discord, you keep your revenue. Bam. Win-win. It's a win-win. Yeah. Win. I mean, I for sure was like, man, Sony is making it, like, very hard for me not to buy a PS5. Like, they're we'll doing... I'll tell you what, bud. Yeah. I will ahead. buy one for Deathloop. And then when I'm bored with Deathloop, you can have it. Sounds like a plan. If you can find one. Because <laughs> yeah, uh, right. there's just a recent um, uh, article I was reading about how like there's going to, like Sony just kind of went out and said, there's probably going to keep being a shortage until next year. Um, so if you can find a PS5, good for you. I'm happy for you. Uh you lucky bastards. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I told myself I didn't want to buy a PS5 until hopefully the second gen, you know, once they kind of fix the little kinks here and there and whatnot. Right. Um, but, yeah, you know, I'm going to keep aiming for that. But, you know, I can't, can't promise anything because... Uh, you know. Maybe you'll get something in your abnormally large stuffings. Sock. Mm. Whatever the term. I don't know. Stock stuffing. Don't stuff <laughs> your sock. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great move from Sony. Especially after seeing that Microsoft kind of failed. They just kind of landed flat in their faces and had nothing to show for it. Which oh yeah no I completely agree with you on that yeah because I mean man I saw so many people just not wanting to see that to see Microsoft owning Discord and I th that might have been an influence of um of uh Discord making the decision to not be bought out by Microsoft you know um yeah I'm not a fan of the buying out. Yeah. Part. Um I think whatever allows uh Discord its anonymity while uh -huh. gaining money with a partnership of some kind mm -hmm. is probably more beneficial and it's better for the market. Yes. So I would Sorry, prefer something so like that than uh than Microsoft essentially just buying the company and just mm -hmm. removing the face of Discord and just integrating it into their like communication hub or something like that, you know? Yes, hundred percent. So we'll see. Um, I mean, it's a done deal, but we'll see what Microsoft does. I mean, no offense to Microsoft, but there hasn't been a lot of um great um chatter for them really? that makes, I mean it's just not in like people saying bad things it's more of like there hasn't been a lot of good things coming out of uh, Microsoft um, like they're forcing Game Pass down our throats which is fine you know Game Pass is, nothing's touched oh Game Pass. don't say that you're just mad because you had to pay for it for fucking state of decay yeah big baby <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> um other, you know other than that like there hasn't been anything fantastic. Like the Xbox and the PlayStation are basically the same fucking console, you know? Like there's nothing better or worse. Like this isn't like the PS3 and the 360, you know? Where the, mm -hmm. you know, PS3 was like just all right superior, just more expensive. And that's why a lot of people got the Xbox. And same thing with the PS4 and Xbox One. Like the PS4 just had. A lot of going for it you know i mean 
To be fair, though, the Xbox and Microsoft has been adding so many quality games on Game Pass. Yes, and that's what I'm saying. Like, that's other yeah. than Game Pass, Microsoft really doesn't have anything. Which I like, I've always said, like, Microsoft doesn't need a lot for their console because they have it's Microsoft. They fucking yeah. do PCs. Like, what do they, you know, like, I understand they made consoles to go against Sony, but it's like they're not really doing all that much other than certain mm -hmm. titles. There isn't anything fantastic that Xbox is doing or Sony. Like Sony is doing everything right. Like this Discord move, fantastic. Like now, like I know Microsoft's like, oh well, you know, you can play on your computer and use Discord and like, play, you know, the Game Pass there. Like, yeah, it's cool, but a lot of people don't want to invest on a computer and just buy the Xbox. You know, mm -hmm. the whole point. Like that, not everyone is like really into computers. They just want to buy. A console and play games with their friends you know oh of course um, and and the thing is down the road it's already happening you know and people were, i remember people talking about it down like years ago where like if crossplay ever happens and the reason why crossplay hasn't been a thing back in the day is because you know the the console wars were somewhat real and you know, people would be like, oh, Xbox this, PlayStation that, and, like, you know, everyone was separated. You could only play with your friends on the PlayStation, or you could only play with your friends on the Xbox, you know? Where, like, mm -hmm. now it's like, hey, you want to play The gap Warzone? is kind of widening, yeah. Like, or, no, the gap is narrowing. Yeah, like, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, let's play Warzone. I have an Xbox. You have a PlayStation, or I have a PC, you know? It's like, it doesn't really matter. I mean, think of the, think of the big games right now. Warzone, mm -hmm. Fortnite, like those are two massive games, and you can be on any console or platform and play with your friends on different platforms. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's on that's only going to be more and more and more and more, hands down. What um, Sony is doing right is that those, games, like for example, Warzone or Call of Duty in general, everything's dropping first on PlayStation. So if there's like a uh, a new something like a new DLC or whatever, it's gonna be dropping on PlayStation first, and then it'll come out like maybe. Well, a month first later. of all, I don't give a shit because Verdance is is just fucking gone. Yeah, I left my heart in Verdansk. <laughs> but, but no, no, sorry, I'm just chewing on things. Cover me, cover me. Uh, 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 I can explain. <laughs> Alright. So, it's just Sony's doing stuff like that that is going to keep them ahead of um, Xbox for a while. Other than that, I mean, obviously PlayStation, everything else are doing great. I don't the even think that matters anymore. Like, I, I think it's more just a matter of, like, this company's blundering this way and this one's doing better this way. It's not even really a competition in terms of hardware or gaming anymore. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, that's the thing, though. If you look, Sony doesn't have almost any blunders. If they have any, it's not their, not that much. They it's don't just really blunder. being a big company that's the, the blunder. Yeah. Just Sony, you know? Like... The thing is, like, their gaming division, the PlayStation, like, it's great. Other than that, everywhere else, Sony-wise, like, probably not doing that great, right? But PlayStation mm -hmm. itself, little to no blunders. I think the only recent blunder that they messed up on, for weird reasoning, I don't, I don't think they have a reason, was um they let go of one of their main Japanese studios that has been working with them since the very beginning and they and i haven't didn't read up too much about it i don't know if they they dropped them or the company itself was like we're gonna go our own way so but they have been with sony since the very beginning helping developing games and all that stuff um, but other than that i have sony just doesn't make mistakes and that's what microsoft does microsoft blunders a lot a lot of things 
that they do and say just like people question like what are you doing hey why are you doing it's this? a learning experience okay pal <laughs> Fair enough. but um yeah i mean going back the discord plays amazing uh hands down to to sony for doing that um and they just they know what they're doing especially in the gaming scene they know what they're doing um considering xbox has been in it for so long that i don't know how they they're just not able to do these things you know dropping the ball bastards um you wanted to tell me about death wish you mean death note Death Note, yeah. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I was wondering, I forgot to mention, yeah. <laughs> he fucking mentions uh, Max Landis in Death Wish. So, recap. Well. Uh, Max Landis goes over Death Wish, his story, you could say? of his mm -hmm. linear uh, Batman psycho controlling Gotham story. Um, Batman grows up, or uh, let's rewind that, Bruce Wayne loses his parents, becomes obsessed with controlling everything, kind of infiltrates the, uh, the mob, organized crime. His direct involvement creates theatrical supervillains and the idea of theatricality through uh, superheroes and whatnot. Um, he essentially trains and tortures Dick Grayson into becoming uh, Robin. He has a falling out with Batman and in his copingness uh, adopts well, adopts funny, um partners up with Jason Todd. Jason Todd mm -hmm. is kind of like this, a bit psychotic and all that too. Um, let's see. And this entire time, it's become more and more self-evident that Bruce Wayne is succumbing to this alter ego, the alter ego known as the Batman. Uh, it's clear that upon Dick Grayson leaving Bruce Wayne, Batman, has kind of gone a little off the fucking deep end. He started creating these uh, alternate bat caves hidden from other people within his inner circle. Um, he is taking on the alter egos of other villains. Uh, he has also allowed himself to be victim to certain villains, i.e. Uh, Hugo Strange being one of them, who is allied with uh, the Joker. The Joker who, I, I don't, I'm not quite sure last week, I, I haven't, I didn't do a recap, I kind of followed where I left off, um, who isn't insane. Mm -hmm. They kind of do this thing where like, this Joker is kind of like way out of his league to a degree, or at least doesn't quite have an idea of what exactly is going on. Um, one thing I do like is, uh, well, I don't really like it, but I, I thought it was an interesting take was, uh, <laughs> him going on like television and airing the beating and killing of Jason Todd, uh, where he mm -hmm. gives this speech talking about, you know, the, the de deification of people to, to the superhero status that they are absolved of sin and they are icons and symbols with no uh, no cracks and uh he he did something a little more eloquent than i did but he then goes on to say that like i'm going to reveal to you the 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 true nature of superheroes or something as he beats poor jason todd to death um the ending i thought was kind of interesting mm -hmm. um <laughs> while poor jason todd is getting his fucking brains bashed in um Batman kind of just goes into the Batcave, burns Wayne Manor, and just kind of fucks off. He, he's about to die until a shadowy figure reaches out to save him. I haven't gotten anything past that. Um, 
but I'm interested in seeing where that goes because there's mm-hmm. still, as you were putting it, uh, Agent of Batman. Uh, there's still, uh, uh, God, what are the, a couple of the other ones. Uh, basically, Superman, some of the other side stuff with uh, Deadshot and all that yeah. too. Lex Luthor. Uh, I did, however, hmm. look up, not look up, watched some of the bit in introducing uh, Zatanna. Uh-huh. You know, I kind of like the idea that she's making bank off social media as kind of like a, a performance magician, kind of like Chris Angel, except yeah. the joke is, is that she's an actual magician. Yeah. Um. There's a bit going on. He tends to do like this like adding an extra weird weird layer uh Max Landis because apparently Zatanna is like like a weird like 50 shades of gray like slave to Lex Luthor mm. um I'm interested in seeing where that goes but for it I I'm just it's just not for me personally but I'm interested in seeing if it, if he can justify it and it has some kind of uh, compelling theme to it, or some kind of through line. Then I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll humor it. I'll humor <laughs> it. Um, a couple things I'm enjoying is that he tends to, he is using a lot of social media to dictate perception. Mm. Um, it's not so much just. Oh wow, this is how people perceive this character through the lens of of like Twitter or YouTube or Facebook. It's how do I use this medium to amplify myself? Which is what you see with Zatanna, which is some of the things that you see with uh Batman. Yeah. Um I feel like as I was saying before, I like some of the things that Max Landis is doing m- more so mostly than uh, some of the minor stuff. Um, but I feel like some of the times he has a bit too much. Um, he puts a little bit too much emphasis on making the canon fit. Huh. Like, I-, I think yeah. it's more of like a, okay, so this person exists. How would they exist in this world? And I have to get every conceivable thing related to this person in and I think it bogs the story down just just a little bit. I, it, I mean, it's not like he's ruining anything or, or anything like that, but I think he is a... It would be like if I created a Star Trek movie or a Star Trek show, and I had to create a story based almost entirely around references. Okay. Like, uh, you know, we, we, we have to have the Tholians and the Tholians are doing this because, you know, Khan is fucking one of them in the ass and this ass was, was ruptured and it's, it's, it was artificially created by the, 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 the Gromphlemites or, you know what I mean? But it's like, I think he's got a little more preconception with name dropping a couple characters because it's like. He mentions Blue Beetle, and you can tell he has a fucking hard on for Blue Beetle. 100%. Like, oh my god, it is absolutely prevalent that his dick engorges <laughs> at least a half centimeter <clears throat> every time he mentions Blue Beetle, which is fine. Um, but he has this, as I keep saying, I don't mean to be the dead horse with a even deader stick he's like this preconception or uh, he has this like desire to like name drop instead of like committing to the story i think as much as i like the idea of a movie or a story where batman just looks left and there's like 50 villains then he looks right and there's another like 50 villains that just get teased i do like the idea of stories that have very small casts and very intimate characters. And he, for the most part, still has that, but I feel like he gets a little carried away sometimes when he starts, like, name-dropping, like, a million different people. Right. 
That's the only issue. Um, Because he's talking about, like, Jean-Paul Valley, you know, Hugo Strange, uh, Oracle, Barbara Gordon, same character, never mind, uh, Selena Kyle. And it's like, well, I don't know if it's because I haven't seen the episodes yet or if he's just, like, throwing all these names out because it's like he's talking about creating a linear story. Like, there's a beginning and an end. And I like that... uh, I like that idea, but I'd really like uh, how we were first talking about the the first episode that I watched, the one with Lois Lane. Yeah. I'd like if they <laughs> slowed it down to something more intimate like that. Like really, yeah. like the the first the the Death Wish episode that I watched barely even goes over the matches Malone thing. Right. Uh, for anyone who, who doesn't remember, uh, I, we were talking about how Lois Lane is investigating this like crime spy called Matches Malone, and you eventually find out that this person is connected to the Bat figure, who is the early prototype like Batman that Bruce Wayne is using. But it's like that that is the 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 thing that I I think gravitated to me a little more than like. Bruce Wayne's Batman story. Like I mm. like Batman. I like some of what they're what he's doing with him, but I feel like he's he's stuffing so much stuff in. Like he has to have the the realistic Nolan stuff in there where it's like, oh, we're examining the the broken glass patterns and and the bats coming from the the northern area. And then he has to have his like the Batman a bit where it's like there's rioting in Gotham and the Joker's doing some stuff and he's getting away with it. No one's shooting him, you know, shit like that. Like yeah. I really, really, really want there to be like a, a, a either a, a collection of videos where he kind of just goes over like, this is the point in time that this is taking place in. This is like a five or six year period. This is when he gets Dick Grayson. This is when he also loses Dick Grayson. This is, you know, Jason Todd. I'd also like to see like the relationships that these characters have. Like what does Jason Todd do? I'm sorry. What does Dick Grayson do once he leaves Batman? Like they don't go over that yet. Um, I'm hoping a lot of this is settled when I see this or when I hear it. Um, but again, I'm, I, I am excited again. Like I know I harp on a lot of things fairly easily, but it's only because I am invested. Yes. But yeah. Yeah. I am okay. excited. I'm interested in seeing what they do with, uh, uh, the next couple of episodes. I, uh, he, he tends to name drop in a way that's like not stealthy, but, uh, foundational. Like, he'll yeah. be like, oh, you know, this person went to go see this guy, and this person that Max Landis references, like, has a supervillain name, but mm. they haven't gotten there yet, with the whole the- theatricality wave that he uh, mentions. But that's like setting it up for something in the future, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you you enjoyed it somewhat. Um, I'm glad you enjoy it somewhat, Harry. <laughs> um, I do believe he goes into more detail on other videos. Um, that's the thing, like, other than um, Agent of Batman, everything else is kind of like a pitch. It's not really... Um, I think okay. he says it. Like, they're more... Like, well, he is going to be doing, a like, a little mini movie of Mm -hmm. some sort too yeah so so he says in one of his recent videos he said that it's all done uh he'll be releasing it soon it's just uh you know i think he might be doing some finishing touches or or whatever probably gonna make this big release or whatever but um yeah so everything else other than asian of bat batman are like pitches so it's just literally him in front and sitting in front of a laptop and he he is just kind of throwing a pitch right so mm-hmm. um, that's why not all the information's there because um, he's just trying to go like he's either explaining things that are a spe- specific to one thing or pitching a story, right? Yeah, like a um, general tentpole. Exactly. 
So because I definitely got the impression that he was going over like what I can assume is like twenty five years worth of Batman history. Yeah. So because that... he really went young with Bruce Wayne. He was like, Oh, you know, this kid, he's like sixteen, seventeen, he's training with the League of Assassins, and then like he gets to the end. And I can only assume given how he describes everything that like it's gotta be at least twenty five years, at least. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So and then his late forties are spent with the Justice League of the Justice Society. So Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, and I I don't know I kind of like that. It it just reminds me of like stuff that we we kind of go off on and you know and I do love the story of Raw. I think what he does to to all the characters uh kind of um I don't know it's different and I I enjoy the different you know like because there could be bad different right but I mm-hmm. like the different that is portrayed into the characters and his uh his Kryptonian epic um. Yeah, I would definitely suggest uh, watching Agent of Batman next for sure. That one's the Agent of Batman. Okay. Yeah, that that right. is like basically. Um, I think I told you last week. It's basically a Death of Superman style video. Um, the it's it's a, it's not a pitch. It's more of a actually Just telling you the thoughts story. out. Okay. No, it's, it's it's actually telling you, yeah, the story of Agent of Batman, and and not a pitch, and not just ideas being rambled out. It's an actual video and an actual story. So, yeah, I think that one's good. And and again, that one's a, I believe that one is specifically, uh, um, post. It's Superman story, with Batman, uh, post um. What it's called, but after what's his face from Krypton comes and tries to take over, it's after mm. that. So. Zod. Yes. I'm telling you, man. I. I want Brainiac. I don't give a shit about Zod. I want fucking Brainiac. I'm sure something like that might come around. All but. I've ever fucking want is Brainiac. Do you have any idea how nerve wracking it is to just want something and mm-hmm. be so close to getting it and not getting it? Oh God. Um, yeah. Um, next topic, or do you still have some more to say about that? Fuck yeah, next topic. Come on, topic me, you motherfucker. Okay. Um, next topic uh so i talked about the week and i was um saying that uh something happened so basically i went (laughs) someone stall (laughs) yeah i went to the movie theaters um for the first time in fucking over a year and a half maybe Mm -hmm. um it was very spontaneous uh i knew um uh, what was it? It was an anime OVA that came out for this anime called uh, Demon Slayer, um, mm-hmm. and very spontaneous because a bunch of other people have already gone seen it, and they're like, "Oh yeah, you should watch it." Blah blah, it's good. And I'm like, "Yeah, I don't know, movie theater. Like, I'm not hundred percent sure." Um, and they're kind of like, "Oh yeah, I know, it's like great, you know, blah blah this and that." And I'm like, "All right, sure." Like, I, you know, I was very on the fence. And um, I was driving around with my girlfriend, and we're kind of just like looking, and we're like, like oh, and we're talking about it, right? We're like, oh, I don't know if we would go, and we're just like, oh, well, let's look at the seating because we were like, when when are the times? Um, and we saw, and, and there's one coming up, and the theater was like, no one has reserved a spot, and this was like coming up soon. And we're like, shit, like, do we go? Like, if no one's gonna be in the movie theater, like. I don't like I think that's fine, you know. Mm-hmm. So we're like, okay, like sure, like fuck it. You know what I mean? Like we're we're going to be wearing masks, you know. We're not going to be eating in the movie theater like, you know, and and if no one's there, it's just us, like fucking great. Let's fucking do it. So, you know. Uh so we buy the tickets and we start heading to the movie theater. 
and um we get there very eerie <laughs> you know there's like literally nobody there's like two people working well one doing the tickets and the other one doing concessions um we went to brendan just by the way um and uh we go and then we start walking to the theater um and so a side note you know how if you order online you get to choose where you sit right Mm -hmm. and then if you go up um and you order at the theater they kind of tell you what seats do you want and you choose which seats do you want i hate that yeah so i hate it all right so we get to the theater right and we're like, okay, like, hopefully it's completely empty because, you know, it, it's just us, right? Like, we, we didn't see anybody else ordering tickets. We go, and there's two people, like, two dudes. And they're literally sitting in front of where we were supposed to sit. Like, what? Uh, excuse me? Uh, yeah, we're just spot. <laughs> like of all places for you to choose your chairs, you choose the the two like in front of every somebody who you know what I mean like you see an empty like you see an empty movie theater and there's just two seats that are gonna be occupied by people and you say, I'm gonna sit in front of those people. Yeah, and we and, and the thing is, we didn't even choose the middle. We didn't. We chose so the good. very. We chose the back aisle, far left. Poor like, thing. We chose the furthest fucking spot because we're like we're gonna be as far away from anybody if anybody decides to get chairs because they'll probably want the front. So let's just be as far back into the side as possible. And these people decide to sit right in front of our spots. And so we did not sit there. We sat on the complete other side of the movie theater. Well, what if you sat in the spot that someone else was going to sit in? That was a risk we were willing to take. Okay. <laughs> God, you monsters. <laughs> but so no one else showed up throughout the whole movie, right? Okay. It was just fucking those two people and us. We were kind of annoyed that we were forced to sit on the other side. Uh, yeah, of course, dude. Um, basically on that side, there was the comfy, you know, recliner chairs. And then we were sitting in those fucking, you know, the old school chairs where you have to like put, pull down the seat and sit down. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Those we're a little the fucking worst. Yeah. We're, we're a little annoyed, uh, but we enjoyed the movie. We enjoyed the movie. Uh, what did was, you see? So it was called Demon Slayer. Fucking man. Hold on, man. What was that? Something train. Hold on. Demon. Demon Slayer runs train. All right. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Demon Slayer Mugen train. Mugen train. All yeah. right. So that's what we saw. Um, it was a good movie. Um, I know of was... uh, Demon Slayer. I just need to to uh, watch it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a good anime. Uh, it definitely blew up. A lot of people have been raving about it now. But when mm-hmm. you know, it, it's a good it's a good show. It's a good it's it's a good show. It deserves the praise. Um, so it, having an OVA come out in theaters is a is a big deal. A lot of people have gone and seen it. Um, is but, the series better than the ending of Attack on Titan? Well, I have not seen the ending of Attack on Titan, so I can't answer that. But <sighs> it's it's hard to top. I'll say this: it's hard to top the first season of Attack on Titan. Other than that, I don't like. I I think I stopped after season two. I think I've only seen the first two seasons of Attack on Titan, so. Mm-hmm. Um, and if Fair you're going enough. with the, if you're asked. going with a joke, I'm so sorry. Hey, it's okay. <laughs> I'll just wait. <laughs> Whatever. No, I'm kidding. I'm good. You know what? Funny enough, 
Jerry. Yeah. I actually have mm. a movie theater related story myself. Oh, <gasps> please do tell. So, uh, you know, the other theater in, uh, in our area, right? Yes. Yes. So, uh, I was, I was there and I was, uh, <sighs> So my my girlfriend and I usually will do like one little, uh, one little like leisure shopping event a weekend, just to minimize things. We're already working, and on top of that, we're we're just staying in and being safe. But but we we usually afford ourselves one time where we're kind of just out, as long as it's not too populated, right? So. The spot, which we haven't been in in like over a year, uh, it looks completely deserted, like empty as usual. So the 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 ritzy little restaurants and whatnot are open. We're mm-hmm. trying to keep away from that. So we're walking along, and we're walking along the uh, the entrance doors of this this theater, and it looks completely empty. And <laughs> right in front of us, this guy just like walks in at like five miles per hour, opens the door and just like bustles in and we're like, what the fuck? So I grab the door before it closes and I look inside. There are no like internal lights on. So it looks fucking like dark as fuck inside. Except yeah. there are people at their posts. Hmm. Which is fucking weird as fuck. Anyway, so they've got like two or three movies playing and I'm not gonna lie. I thought out of out of all of us, I thought I was gonna be the one to break first. I you... kept the faith. I kept my resolve, mm. my determination. There was nothing really to watch anyway. It's like what yeah. two like B horror movies and then mm-hmm. one movie that's on HBO Max or something. I don't know. They were they had uh, Mortal Kombat. I mean, you. You know my opinion. I'm not going to go fucking yeah. watch that on the big mm-hmm. screen. And... If if it was nothing but two hours of Kano on loop, then maybe. <laughs> then fucking maybe. <laughs> Kano wins as a fucking beauty eye. And seriously, the best and part. G- going off, like going with that is with HBO Max. You know, it, I I feel like people are still going to the theaters. Like yeah, it. I think, to be fair, the theater industry is probably in the decline. Yeah, um, it is. Sadly, uh, but you know they're they're definitely getting some kind of last hurrah. I would hope. Yeah, like I mean, what... God knows, you and I could probably keep a a fucking theater industry going for like a good ten years. The amount of times we go to the fucking movies. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I don't know. It's hard to beat what HBO Max is doing, uh, you know, with same release, you know. it. Yeah. It's it's a smart thing to do, but it's like well, it kind of sucks with, with what's happening. But it's just yeah. the experience of going to a movie theater is just it can't be beat. And watching something like yeah. – Watching Lord of the Rings Extended Edition in a big screen was fucking great. And don't get me wrong. I love that I can just sit at home and watch it, but being able to experience in front of a big screen was special. You know what I mean? Um, so it, I don't think HBO Max could take that away for from people, I guess. It, you know, because it's people go to the movie theaters as an event, not just to watch a movie, but you know, mm-hmm. they do dinner beforehand, then go watch a movie. You know, it's like it's just a thing you do, right? Um, and it's just incorporated with, I think, a lot of people, um, especially here in America. You know, I don't know about other countries, but here in America, it's just it's a staple, right? You go watch movies when they come out, right? Uh, you know, um, what is it called? Um, um, the midnight released fucking movies things, you know, like mm-hmm. premiere. Uh, premiere. Thank you. Uh, what's gonna beat that, right? Do you want to watch it Friday, you know, or do you want to watch it, you know, 
you know, at 8 p.m. the night before, you know, on the big screen. Like, mm-hmm. it's hard to top that, man. And, and again, big screen, it's it's hard to top that with the surround sound and being able to sit in a the movie theater with your friends. Like, that is going to be hard to beat. Like, yeah, we can maybe cut around some fucking, you know, couch or something. But at the same time, it's like, fuck that. Let's go eat somewhere and then go to, uh, you know, to the movie theater mm-hmm. and watch a movie. That sounds and better. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm I'm absolutely certain because it's I don't I don't streaming as like an evil thing. I it definitely has its benefits. Yes. You know, it's going to change how movies are formatted, how they're mm-hmm. made. Probably for you know, for better and worse. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing is, is that uh, there's no analytics there's no analytics to 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 signify like uh, how do you want to put it one of the things that uh a lot of the filmmakers a couple months ago when we were talking about this i think in our third or fourth podcast Mm -hmm. was like well this could hurt the reviews for like dune or another one of the couple like big budget movies that warner brothers were coming out with right yeah so there are no modern ways to track uh not popularity but uh mm-hmm. eyes like anyone can watch mm-hmm. it that's fine and so far hbo hasn't charged people for new releases yes but uh you know they were talking about how there might not be a dune part 2 or there the, the the mm. future of the Dune franchise, which I mean, I don't ever see them doing anything past like a part two, but yeah. um, a part two might not get made because if it's released on HBO Max, it could hurt uh, the the reception mm. because you know sense. people paying more yeah. to go to the theaters generates the understanding of how much this movie would you know would right. call for a sequel. And um that's... but see that that's the thing is it's like if you could create like some kind of statistical analysis that's free of like theaters then you can create another way of like measuring what people watch and how popular it is and make movies based on that metric but i mean you know that's another thing altogether too yeah we're just thinking about um uh how like people we can call it. Um, look at box office uh, earnings and whatnot, and compare that. Where it's like exactly now that not everyone's going to be going to the theaters, and HBO Max has been doing this thing for this entire year. It's going to be the entire year, um, and it's hard to see. I mean, I don't know the numbers right behind uh, how many more subscribers they've gotten since they released it. You know, or you know who's still. You know, what I mean, like I'm not 100 percent sure, but. Mm-hmm. If it goes really well, it's hard to see them not continue it. You know, like if oh, if, of if they if they have got if they got their money's worth of subscribers for the entire year because of the movies they were able to release on their streaming platform, why not do it again? Why not fork over oh, the, yeah. the money? You know, of course. So and I I, I think I think uh, I mentioned this in a fairly negative way before but i don't consider streaming like a bad thing Mm -hmm. um i think it's on one (laughs) monopolies like you know Mm. disney and warner brothers and other groups like that yeah it's on them for not seeing the change in platforms and the medium Mm -hmm. um it's at the detriment of films and television that these uh, these groups weren't able to monetize this or not monetize it, but uh, find a way to utilize these in a different way sooner. Right. So it, it's not so much that it's a bad thing. It's changing, you know, it's tough, but, but I don't necessarily consider that a bad thing. I mean, I would really, really, really like to see 
uh, movies on the big screen, and I don't think that's going to go away. But yeah. I do think you're going to see a, a a drop in in some things. Yes, it definitely dropping um on uh I think the consistency of people going to the movie theaters physically is going to drop. Um, mm-hmm. like I'm not going to be um <clears throat> how do you say like for like every movie going to the movie theater right it's just not going to happen um yeah i get you b- big movies you know doctor strange um you know maybe Cal- captain america captain america captain marvel too like you know, those are the movies that are probably like you know what i would wouldn't mind seeing this on the big screen you know it's just there's certain movies that are just meant for it you know mm-hmm. they're meant to be watched in a movie theater you know surround sound master screen you know um I'm sure the new avatars are going to be that specifically. And side note, I think it's, well, I don't know if it's bullshit, but I think it's bullshit that avatar released on a movie theater somewhere in, I think Asia and mm-hmm. they surpassed, um, end game end game. Yeah. And I think, I think I it's just... fucking bullshit for yeah. like, ye- like I understand end game did the thing where they kind of extended it or whatever, Sure, whatever. But the thing is, it it was a new movie, right? Just for that, I think theaters all across the world should go out of business or just stop so that James Cameron can't release his movies on the yeah. big screen. Just for that. Just to fuck him. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, I won't be watching any of the evidence. I still don't remember a single fucking thing. From the first one. And I've watched it's, it. Minimum it's once. You're not missing much. I know. You're not missing it. <laughs> because I, I know I've seen it. And I don't want to rewatch it. Because I don't he remember thought, anything about it. He thought it was going to be like this big transformative thing. like, But nope. Nope. It took his ass like 10 years of just saying he's going to make a sequel. Before like actually getting underway with it. Yeah. But I think Endgame probably pushed him and he's like holy shit there's another fucking franchise that is like surpassing my shit <laughs> i mean the moment they come out with like fucking the end game for x-men or the end game for fucking fantastic four it's gonna they're gonna roll out avatar again just to fucking knock it down a peg yeah uh, i wouldn't be surprised um but yeah We'll see what happens with movie theaters. Um, I I know I'll still be if hopeful. I'm sure they'll still be around, but I'm sure I'll be going to them just for fun. You know, like I said, you know, once everything gets back to normal, like I wouldn't see why you know you and I like, hey, let's go get some dinner and then go watch a movie. Fuck it, hell yeah, why not? You know, fuck yeah. Um, or just plan again, like a big movie we're super stoked about. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yeah, let's go to movie theaters and watch it. You know, like it, it's gonna happen. Like, it's just, it's one of those things. Like, yeah, we can sit down and watch it in our living room, but at the same time, like, we can go out with our friends and watch it in a movie theater. You know, mm-hmm. even, even with family. You know, if you go with family, you know, you have kids. Yeah, fuck whatever. family. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I think movie theaters are here to stay. Um, I think. Uh, HBO. I think what HBO Max is doing is great. Um, just and I, I don't see them stopping it. Um, mm-hmm. I'm sure they gave a lot of money, a lot of money to to a lot of people. Um, uh, to to be able to do that. And again, if it's if it's worth worth it, I don't see them not you know doing it again. Um. Oh, agreed. Um. Other than that, let's. So I wrote here on the notes, video game invention. I don't know if that's exactly mm. what I meant to write. Um, no, no, because uh, last week you brought up a, a nice long topic that I, I wanted to add upon. Um, I was talking with a friend uh, over the weekend, uh, and we were talking about game design. Just, you know, like. 
what what drives a person to want to play like how do you how do you keep a person's interest and you know i was trying to think of how that worked into role playing mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. which is the thing that we were talking about we kind of had like a bit of a back and forth over what made a a role playing game uh, and one of the things that I, I ended up going to was uh, the Shadow of War and Shadow of Mordor games. Mm. Uh, and to be fair, I don't think they're all that impressive games. I'm no offense to anyone who's a fan. I just, I'm not the biggest fan of them myself. But what I am a big fan of is the Nemesis system. Mm. Uh, which I, you know, I think just creates some of the best uh procedural villain you know uh role playing consequence gameplay of all time like of all time yeah. uh you know you can spare enemies you can shame them you can kill them and it it uh, it cre I mean of course it has a little tooling to do if you wanted to put it in a I think a more linear role playing game but um Personally, I, I I was trying to think of other ways that that could have been utilized in other yeah. games. Um, and it's only disappointing now that I think about it that other parts of Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War don't incorporate, I think, other better game design mechanics into the game itself. You know, I was I was excited to play this game. I was excited to get into the you know uh, the War of the Rings mythos, and I realized that like the the overall look I think has been stretched a little thin. Uh, okay. I think uh, this probably goes into a larger discussion of like costume design because uh, next week I would actually really like to talk about. Um, superhero costumes, something that I've been noticing a little more of. Um, but like, what am I saying? Superhero costumes, mm -hmm. bullshit, bullshit. Oh, the, the Lord of the Rings design I thought was kind of perfect in, well, not mm -hmm. perfect. I thought it was as perfect as it could be in the Lord of the Rings. Um, I'm not hate bonering, but I felt like the, the Hobbit outfits mm -hmm felt very produced and okay. I feel like that produced look is all the more prevalent in something like uh, Shadow of War and Shadow of Mordor. The overall aesthetic that the game copies from not the Hobbit of the Lord of the Rings, but the artist. Okay. You know the ones that I'm talking about. The yeah. the uh, the art design that Peter Jackson wanted from those those images that are in a lot of the uh, the Lord of the Rings novels, in between yes. chapters, yeah, that look, I think, has been kind of milked a lot. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, where am I going with this? Anyway, <laughs> uh, back to something more constructive. Um, I was really disappointed with the the Italian Celebor or whatever his name is. I always forget that mechanic. Um, you know, it's it's really hard to 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 feel invested when you know you the the story is telling you that you're kind of making a bit of a deal with the devil, um, mm. and there's no repercussion to playing this character. So you play Italian. He's this ranger fucking character he's he's aragorn he's aragorn 1.0 yep. and uh you know you play the uh the dark jack dark prince uh kind of copy and paste equivalent uh mm -hmm. of this character and what's disappointing is you have this really great uh mechanic and that's the only thing mm -hmm. i mean i i literally think that's the only thing that makes this game particularly good it's got a hodgepodge of other things that uh that it kind of parrots from uh other modern games you know open world uh you know one click response combat 
uh, uh, ingredient gathering, uh, all these things I, I didn't really care for and I think muddled the gameplay quite a bit. Um, but what bothered me, I felt, was they were trying to go for the theme of like uh, the, as I said before, the bargain with the devil, right? Yeah. yeah. And I felt the uh, the the ghost elf character, we'll just call him Celebor or whatever, Celebor more. Um, there was no downside to playing him or using him. Okay. You know, uh, one of the things that I think makes uh, a role playing game more enjoyable is that you don't even have to necessarily have like uh, branching pathways or anything. It could more just be how you play the game or how the game allows you to play. Yeah. And if the game had been, you can play as Talion and it's a fairly normal playthrough, um, or you can access Celebor, Celery Salt's, you know, abilities or tap yeah. into him, but it, it comes at a price. Uh, okay. That, I think, would have been more interesting. Because too often you see games like Prince of Persia, Jack and Daxter, uh, I think these are the more prevalent ones, where the story gives you this other character, this alter ego, and they're evil or they're dark, but there's no repercussions to playing them. You know, Jack and Daxter or Jack 2 uh, touted this, you know, like this idea of playing this darker character. And, you know, they ran with the themes of like, oh, you know, be careful, you know, or you're going to, you know, Dark Jack is going to take over. And, you know, for the most part, you could just remove Dark Jack from the entire game and Jack 2 would still function perfectly fine. And the same almost entirely for Prince of Persia 3 is the same. You know, uh, uh -huh. the prince is, is infected with some sand uh, time monster and it, it creates like this alter ego. But other than uh, like some quirky mechanic, the, the gameplay between Jack and Dark, or uh, Prince and Dark Prince aren't really different. Um, it's the same thing with uh, Shadow of War. And Shadow of Mordor. Mm -hmm. um, you play as Talion, and then when you use Celebrivor, Celery Salt's abilities, it's just a buff. Yeah. And I, I don't quite care for that, because I feel as though introducing uh, some kind of consequence to using his abilities would have been far more interesting. Okay. Anyway, I don't know. Yeah. I just yeah. I was just thinking of that when we were talking about the massive uh no I mean the the nemesis system and how that could have through gameplay yes. through gameplay changed um how you perceive the game, how the, the game design uh wants you to feel about the story. Because too often you have this like this cognitive dissonance um as I mentioned in like Jack and Daxter or Prince or even um, since we're on Naughty Dog, yeah. uh, Uncharted, where you have this heartfelt story or you have this frightening story or you have this. Yeah, we'll, we'll go back to Uncharted. Um, you have this quirky adventure story, right? Yes. And the adventure story plays out like people are just getting fucking punched and kicked, but like. Nathan Drake, if you're playing on hard mode, kills like mm -hmm. hundreds of people. So like I, I don't know the terminology for it. They throw it around all the time. Uh Ludo Normative? Ludo Ludo narrative. Um that concept I think could have been used really well in uh in Shadow of War to work with the Nemesis system. So instead of it just being like, we're going to give you all these really cool enemies to fuck with, let's see what we can do on your personal level, on your, like, your avatar level. So you have these abilities as a normal person, but since you're partnered with, like, this demon elf spirit dude, um, you can tap into his abilities, but they come at a cost. And you can play the game, you can get there normally as Talion, yada yada or you can play with celebrim bagabanga's abilities 
and it comes at some kind of a cost. I don't know. I, I was fiddling with this idea when I was talking about this story and I felt like it was a wasted potential not to do something in game yeah. with this character. Cause I mean, you do use this character on a game level. It's just their abilities. They're like silly abilities. Mm-hmm. They just enhance how you play. They just give you a supernatural edge. I would have been more interested if, you know, they came at some kind of a price or the the right. active use of these powers. Not like I'm not talking about like a a meter of energy. I'm talking about like what if it had serious repercussions on how you played the game. I don't know. I don't know. Sense. I don't know. Just just throwing ideas out, man. No, yeah, it makes I don't sense. want to design a game, not at all. <laughs> if you were to design a game, what type of game would you design? Uh, I would probably really love to do a uh, an immersive sim. Okay. So a really great idea that I had would have been like taking the concept of like working in an office mm-hmm. and juxtapose it with like hell oh okay get it because like you're in an office and you fucking hate it so like the idea is you work in this office and like the building would be like a 10-story building and you file the wrong tps report and the apocalypse happens oh god and you have to get out of the building if you get out of the building the game is technically over but like if you read a couple of shitty fucking corporate emails, you realize that like the CEOs or the CEO and the board of directors on the top four are the fuckers who started the apocalypse. And you can either go down yeah, and flee. And then the game ends that way, or you can go up and try to stop the apocalypse from continuing. And then, like, you can, it would have a couple of the tedious shit, like, some resource management where it's, like, you can grab, like, staplers and shit like that, or, like, uh, paper, and that would be the main thing. Like, you could fold them into, like, paper stars, or, like, paper knives, or, like, paper planes, um, and you can collect, like, certain resources and give them to, uh, uh, God, what's his name? I had a name for this fucking dude. Phil. You can give him to oh. Phil. Phil is the, uh the character who hides in between the, uh, the walls. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. I, uh, I don't know. I, uh, one of the things that I, I'm, I'm pulling from a lot of in terms of design is, um, some prey, a lot of it in terms of like tone would have been portal. Okay. Okay. But I think visually it would have been very much like human fall flat, like very very drab, very bland, very straightforward. Okay, now, it sounds interesting. I I like the concept of it, just the, the the story. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, yeah. It's just I'm surprised you had this much to go with. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> I I I remember when your pretty face was going to hell came out on Adult Swim. And I was like, oh. oh, man, I fucking, I kind of like this idea. Mm-hmm. Like, this idea that, like, hell is just a cubicle space, right? Yeah. Um, But I, I liked the idea of it rather being, like, instead of, like, you go to hell and it's, or, hold on, instead of the office coming to hell, it's kind of like hell coming to the office. And I like the idea of just, like, oh, you've got to, like, maneuver your way through these 10 or whatever floors. I was going to do nine as a joke for the nine, nine rings of hell. Yeah. Um, I thought that was a little too tongue in cheek, but you have like little demons and imps and, and like, mm-hmm. uh, and figures and the, uh, Greek mythological characters in hell would be helping you or would try to help you. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm... But I don't know. That seems like a game I would at least attempt to try just to play. Yeah. It was fun. I, I wouldn't. The thing is that when I get into the nitty gritty, I wouldn't really know how to do. Uh, 
I feel like I have a better idea of how to like how to push some interest, but I think on like a micro scale, I have a hard mm-hmm. time because I wouldn't really know okay. like, well, who the fuck cares? Like, or how mm-hmm. do I like get this person to to want to go down or anywhere? Like, what's the motivation? Like that, some of that's a little difficult for me, but I really like some of the uh, the simpler mechanics without all of the extra stuff. Yeah. You know, one of the things I really enjoy about some of the older games, Portal. Portal's a perfect game in my opinion it's 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 predicated off of two mechanics or a very simple mechanic and like one loop solve a puzzle yeah and then go to the next one and the other one is just use portals um so when i came up with this idea the, the main idea behind it would be like uh get from point a to point b try to be a little stealthy, you know, work your way around. Altogether, I didn't anticipate this game being anywhere more than two or three hours of gameplay. But I wanted to create a... uh, a tone and experience that I felt was unique. Okay. But yeah, you know. Awesome. Dude, yeah, I... Like, what that is, I mean, if you ever get into game development, I think it'd be a solid game. I'm never getting into game development. <laughs> Everyone's going to hate my idea. I quit. Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be someone out there who's going to hate anything you do. Satan. Yeah, especially that person. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm Satan-oriented tonight. I'm sorry. <laughs> my Catholic friend. <laughs> Oh, all right, man. Um, I'm good with calling it there. How about yourself? Fuck yeah, I'm down. Fuck yeah. All right. Um, we are you? Yeah, you know we're gonna like. I think last week we said we're gonna go back to Thursdays. We kind of dropped the ball this week, but no, we did drop the ball. We we did drop the ball this week, but we'll definitely uh get back to Thursdays. It just works out specifically for next month. For Loki, because news is it will be releasing on Wednesdays instead of Thursdays. No, sorry. Loki. Thursdays. No, wait. No. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. I need to get it. It's coming out Wednesdays instead of Harry. Fridays. There we go. That's what I wanted <sighs> to say. Dropping the ball, man. Always. It's what I do. <laughs> Can't even trust you. Yeah. All right, folks. If you want to tell us that my game idea is awful or that Harry is stupid or that his game idea is awful and I'm stupid, you can email <laughs> us at hittingthemark2020 at gmail.com. If you want to watch our videos, we're on YouTube, Hitting the Mark with Harry and Mark. Mm-hmm. Or... If you want to uh, hear about all the the stupid stuff we say in 140 characters or less, I don't know. I I don't know. I don't. Did they lift that thing yet? I don't fucking care. <laughs> you can uh, you can hit us up on Twitter, capital H, capital T, capital M underscore podcast. H T M underscore podcast. All right, folks. Thank you for tuning in. We'll definitely try making a uh, normal sized video next week. We appreciate you listening. Bye bye. Bye.